picked up another truck. This was kind of a weird experience. The guy I met wasn't the guy I was talking to on Marketplace and it looked like a fake in account. And it's just a weird ordeal where the guy gave me the wrong address and I said, can you call me? Because I didn't know where to go. Then he called me then he said, go blah, 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 left, right, straight, three quarters of a mile past field into the woods. I met a normal guy, but through the phone, not normal at all. It was quite strange, and I thought I was going to get killed. But we have picked up another old Mazda truck, but this one's a little special. Anyways, I need to look at my maps because I don't know where I'm going. And we'll get back to you when I get this thing home and go over what we got. I wish I had somebody with me. I'm riding this side all the way. That wheel's gonna hit the ramp just fine. This side though, all right, looks like it's gonna hit. So if I just keep coming straight back with it, should be good. All right, straight back with it. Kind of cut it to the left and that should be all right. I do kind of have brakes. Out of gear, let's go. That right there is why you don't do stuff by yourself. That's about to fall off of there. Crush that oil pan. Ah, dang it, I don't have a good way of picking that up. I wish I had an extra hand, but that's what we're gonna do. Have that ramp right there with the original ramp. Should drop that tire down on there. You can see somehow she's just hanging on right there. And hopefully it doesn't hit that control arm on the bottom. Rolls off sideways. I think it might dig into the back there. Let's give it a try. Please be okay. <sighs> That's cool. Man. Ah, please be okay. <sighs> Oil pan intact. Looks like this shield might have saved us. That was already bent up from the last guy that I got it from. Shine up in here. Is that old pan okay? See where it took some scraping there. Ah, I think it's good. All right, looked back to the video. We didn't hit the pan, it just caught that front. She slid down with this ramp over here. I started using the jack. That's why that's like that and it finally went. I to scoot this ramp all the way over like this. Now you might ask, why didn't you just air those tires up? Well, they're off the beat and I couldn't get them to take air. So that's why but we got her off. A little crooked compared to the trailer, but there she is. Now tomorrow, we'll hop in this thing, get a good walk around, and then see if we can get this thing running. That is plenty for the night. So to get this thing in a better spot to work on, we're gonna rob the wheels off the old Ram 50. These are the same bolt pattern, and then we'll be able to roll this thing up the hill a little closer where it's easier to work on.
perfect time for vehicles. The EPA was cracking down on safety and emissions. So what did you get? You got weird little trucks like this because your gas guzzlers just weren't good. You had the baby boomers who are now in their late 30s, had a whole fleet of little rugrats running around sucking on mom's t I mean dad. Uh, so then you get weird stuff like this. A 1984 Mazda B2200 that is not a gas engine. It has a diesel, a 2.2 liter Perkins that is supposed to be fuel efficient, knocking down like 40 miles a gallon. So you can load up the family in the bed with the kids back there and mom and dad in the cab and go to the grocery store. This truck has been sitting a while. I don't know much about it, but it has not been on the road since 1998 that's going to be 26 years now they did not make very many of these trucks when they started out they did this perkins 2.2 liter for two years then they went to a mishibishi that was actually turboed so this one's a non-turbo non-intercooled just straight diesel engine it looks fairly similar to if you just look at the original two liter they put in the gas trucks or the 2.2 she is a five speed manual i don't know if they were all five speeds i think they might have had four speeds we do look like we're going to have some wiring issues going on here and a lot of just trash up in this thing did look through the paperwork there is some cool stuff dating back to the original owner that bought this truck um, he bought it in March of 1984. This truck was made in January. And then I have like different boxes from oil filters and just the mileage that when they're doing oil changes, changing it all the way at 3,000 miles. And that stopped when it was about at 63,000 miles. So we don't have record for the last 5,000 miles as she's sewing 68,000. We got some original booklets here that came with the rig like an owner's manual talking about these trucks and the changes that were made. We got a 10 minute customer maintenance course. You read through, has some cool little illustrations. Call me weird, but I think history like this is cool to have with the truck. And then once you go through the booklet, you can certify yourself, just sign your name, but that's open. So eh, I guess this guy was never certified that had this one. So she might not have been taken care of. Now parts are very scarce for these old trucks just because they're only produced for two years. So we're gonna do everything right in this video, kinda. To start, we're gonna have to drain that diesel fuel tank because we don't know what that's gonna be like. Diesel's not as bad as ethanol and won't tear up the tank as bad. But we're just gonna be precautious here and go ahead and jack it up, do all that. And then we'll change the oil, get all that stuff right. And then we'll try and get this thing running. And then if she runs, try and get her in gear and get her out of here, take her to the road. Oh, I love working on the gravel. We'll see what color she looks like here. Hopefully this looks nice and clean, no chunks or anything like that. But who knows? Be clean, be clean. Oh, that. Oh, that looks good. How's it smell? Ain't much in there. I need to open this up for a vent path, but we don't have the key for that. We don't even have the key for the condition. So I guess we're gonna have to drill that out or try and get on the back side of that mechanism. You're gonna open a day. Look at that, opened up. So diesel, when it goes bad, I guess it smells like sulfur. So it'll smell like Yellowstone if you've ever been there. This is a good time to take a look under the rig here. She is pretty crunchy down here. Could be worse, I imagine, but that leaf from there, she's got some weight in the bed. Our drain pan is probably getting pretty close to full. We do got a big old drum, so we might have to throw this plug in there real quick. All right, folks, this is looking pretty clean. We do got five gallons of good stuff, and we got some uh, that diesel supplement stuff. So we're gonna call that good there. Go ahead and plug her. So I'm gonna change the oil while Dad fills this thing up with clutch fluid and tries to get a clutch, because if we look here, this clutch is floppy. So maybe that slave cylinder needs to be bled. I'm not for sure. Maybe she's junk. I'm guessing junk how that feels. Now, I do have an 83 Mazda B2000 gasser right there. We had a similar issue to that truck where the clutch was pretty floppy, but not quite this floppy. We just bled that slave cylinder and it fixed it. That plug's got me worried. I think that thing has seen better days. He's losing the corner there. Oh yeah, it's a quarter, it's a quarter. She got a big drain plug on her, three quarter. She ain't messing around on the old mini truck. Got that broke loose pretty easy. Now, with this being a diesel, it's probably going to be pretty dirty. Don't really expect this to be super clean, but hopefully she's got oil. She might not have any oil. We'll see. Oh, yeah. Black. That looks like your great-grandpappy's lungs right there. What are you making that face for? Put on the penis. <laughs> That's chlamydia. While that oil's draining, let's go see. Dad's messing with this clutch. Push it down here. 
All right, push it down, hold it down. Pushing it down, all the way down. Yeah. All right, push it a couple times, see if it does anything. It's moving down here a little bit. I right, push it down and hold it down once. Let me see what I can do here. Can you let it up? I mean, it's, it's working. I may not be right, but it's... Well, I'm getting fluid coming out, so... And it's moving a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's getting stiffer down here, so it's... It's building up something. It's just barely moving it. I don't understand what's going on. It could just be that clutch smash cylinder. Right, pop that back in there. And then we got some good oil for here. Filter's in a lovely location way down in there. So in order to get to that, we're gonna have to pop this here cover off. I didn't think old cars did these covers like the new ones, but here it is right here. We got a few bolts that probably won't come out up through here. There's one. Man, these impacts are nice. Makes things way easier. Well, that one came right out. There we go. We're just gonna do the delete kit on this. Get out of there. We got a clear look at this radiator. She's clearly busted right there. I don't see it leaking there. We might get lucky. It might just be this lower hose right here. How it's seeping right here. That might be all our issue. I ain't got enough junk in my trunk, so Dad's gonna try and get that filter for me. I ain't got a filter wrench. Dad was able to break that loose with his man hands. They got a little boy hands, I reckon. So we're gonna treat it right. We got Wix oil and fuel filters. For the diesel oil, we're gonna be running the Rotella T4. Heard good stuff about this. So looking at this, I've never even heard such a thing. If you look down right here, it's hard to see. We have another filter. See if I can get a better look on it here. So that guy right there that dad's touching, that is the bypass oil filter. And if we look in here, we have our guide here. Got this gas station information here. So we got the oil pan, takes five liters. Your oil filter takes another 0.8 liters. Then you have this bypass filter that takes 0.6 liters. So when I went to the store, I just got this part number here, which is our full flow oil filter. So we don't have that bypass one, but we're gonna call that one good. Full flow's changed out. We're gonna top her off with oil. That's looking much better than that. Whoa! Jeez! This was a clean motor until that. Yep, we up. Why is it going down? It's going down slowly. Like a bull in the china cabinet. For some reason, she could not swallow it. Now we gotta replace this fuel filter. Gosh dang it. Why am I so weak? All right, we're not gonna give it a choice. Dirty. Break loose. Don't be on to get a filter. Oh! Come on. Oh! Jeez! My testicles. Ah, holy crap. As tight as bark on a tree. Need to get that clean. Oh, she's got a little bit of stuff been living up in there. We're gonna put some of this diesel additive in there, and then we'll put some fresh fuel in there too. It's one ounce per five gallons. So we're gonna use the whole thing. No. I ain't scared. One, two, that's good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try and fire this thing up. Fuel system keeps losing prime, so we gotta pump it up right here. Go for it. Sitting since 1998. That didn't sound good. She's gonna be a runner. Freaking water going to the radiator. We hadn't topped it off with coolant with that having that leak, but I guess it knows it doesn't have coolant. It is right there. It's pretty fancy for 1984. We probably should put coolant in if we want to let it run longer. She's dry. All right, she's topped off, not leaking. We're gonna go ahead and let her heat up and do a full little cycle here. <laughs>
That belt is floppier than a ball sack when you're doing jumping jacks. It's junk. Yeah, look at that. He's weird for he's outside. <sighs> Tighten that belt up. <sighs> Which we need to get all new belts and hoses if we're actually gonna use this rig someday. No, How tight? Why are you prying it way back there? Let me see that. No, this is good. How tight? It's the bottom there. That's probably good. That belt's ready to break. Okay. My belt's jumped. All right, that's tight. We'll tighten our bolts back up. I'll show you how you got to start this thing here. You got to tie these two wires together right here. Once you tie those two together, you'll get your orange glow plug light. And once that goes out, it's ready to start. And what that's going to do, he's going to touch this to that wire there, which will jump to the starter solenoid. It fires right up. The blower motor does work. Just got to tie fuses together there. She blew a bunch of crap out. Yeah, it's blowing hot. Heat's working. All the lights working, has blinkers. These marker lights are working as they should. We don't have wipers yet. It's not a big deal though. Tail light's working. We did let it run for about 10 minutes. See, temp gauge is coming up and we have seen it go back down. So the thermostat must be working as it should. We have been trying to bleed this slave cylinder to get a clutch, but we can still see she's floppy. Probably gonna have to go ahead and order a master cylinder. It looks like a master cylinder is good for these diesels and also the gas trucks. So it should be the same, but it's gonna have to be an eBay one. So we're gonna order that up and hopefully we can drive this thing. Try it. All right, might start it here. We gotta get it back there. The brakes are locked up. Now we're gonna just try and put it in reverse and let her go. We'll see what happens. So we didn't realize it the other day when we were trying to bleed the slave cylinder. This is on the back side of the master cylinder here. If you look up in there, this rod off your clutch pedal, that piece that it pushes on, it's not doing anything. And it's supposed to come out. It's stuck in right now, so that's not correct. We're gonna soak this all down and pop this thing out. Then we gotta get the lines off right here, hopefully without breaking them. So I got them soaking. I'll give those a second. I say the chance of this breaking is greater than it not breaking. But we try and nice and easy with it. Oh man. I say I just got pretty lucky. That was pretty tough, but I got this one to break loose somehow. Thank goodness. So there's one. Now I gotta get this bottom one. Those things are pretty rusty. Probably need to be replaced anyways and just rebend all that. But we'll be lazy and cheap. Really need line wrenches. <sighs> this one's a little hard to hold and pull on. I can only really get on it on that one spot. Good. I'm sure you guys didn't want to watch me for the last half hour, but we finally got her after soaking her. Put the vice grip down where I got my nut up in my stomach to get that pinched down. Working her barely. That was entirely too hard. Oh, I don't even know if I can turn off a wrench yet. Got this little mini wrench somewhere, this guy. I don't know if it's gonna be loose enough to turn. We did not break it though, yet. Was able to get it out of there. So this is our new one right here. You can see the center right there, it's more out and it's up on that holder there. Now here on the back side, you can see it's hard to, but that's pushed in. It should be up against this locking device right here. You just push that rod up and I'll feed this in there to you. It's already much better than what it was. And we gotta pump it several times and then we gotta bleed it. That did the trick, it's getting harder. So 
So I just fixed that transmission cooler. She was hanging down, so I fixed the bracket on it. Got it nice and secure. Battery's in it. Clutch is bled. Let's take this thing for its first drive since 1998. Fires right up. I suck at recording, I'll tell you that right now. Because I just suck. You zoom? <laughs> yes. Well, I'm shaky as hell, too. Back can explain it better than me on the back side of this old man. It's got a vacuum pump right there. can't believe we got this thing going it was actually rather easy so as you can see she is a rough little thing wish we could have drove her a little bit more but we need to clean out this bed because holy crap that is a lot of weight actually back there and we just need to do that anyways but as you can see and if you're new to the channel right here's an 83 mazda b2000 
with the two liter gas engine. So this truck would be a perfect donor for this one. I like the looks of this and everything. Yes, she's a long bed and that's a short bed and people like short beds more for some reason. But I really like the look of this truck, especially with the camper shell. So here's that gas two liter right here, as you can tell. She got a little hot because one of the coolant hoses popped off and blew coolant all over this thing. But this truck actually does run and idle pretty dang good. But looking at everything, I mean, even on the firewall, that's all the same. I'm not for sure on the transmission, so I'll have to do some reading. But I would like to take this motor out and put this diesel motor in. I think that'd be a pretty cool deal just because this truck is so rough. I mean, yeah, we could clean this thing up. She might look all right. But I have this one already, so why not swap those over? Um, I'm not for sure if we're actually going to do this or not. Um, I'd like to know your guys' opinion. Would you rather see us fix up the old diesel truck right here, clean it up and see what potential it has? Or would you like to see that swap and putting this diesel in that truck? Of course, before doing that, we need to drive this thing some more, shake her down, make sure she's actually going to be reliable. I guess these things are known for cracking heads and they're really hard to find parts for. That's going to wrap up the fun for the B2200 diesel. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I like these mini trucks. I like anything that looks weird or is just unique. And that for sure is a truck that small with a four cylinder diesel made by Perkins. Hell yeah. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment what you think, and subscribe. Have a good night.